G'day. Welcome to Crystal Clear Mathematics, where it is easier than you think. I'm Graham Henderson, and we're now looking at another method for factorising quadratic equations called the Diamond Method. So if this is one that you've been taught in school and didn't understand, then I hope this makes sense for you. And if it's new to you, then I encourage you to watch in case you like it. Uh, it has some nice features, but so do the others. Again, I, you might notice I've used the same quadratic equations that I did in the previous one, so you can watch the two videos and compare the techniques. But it, it still uses this same method of multiplying 7 by minus 3 to get minus 21, and writing the plus 4 underneath. Now the reason it's called the diamond method is that often uh, teachers will encourage you to draw a cross like this, and even to imagine a box around it looking a bit like a diamond. And we're going to fill in these two sides. Now a lot of teachers don't actually get you to draw the boundaries in, so you might wonder why it's called a diamond method, it just looks like a cross. Uh, however you set this out is not really that important. Uh, this has some merit. I might show you a, a different way of setting it out on the next one, which I think has slightly more merit because I like to link these, and that's a bit hard with this method. I suppose you can still do it. Let's ask ourselves this question. What numbers multiply to make 21 that are four apart or have a difference of four? Now, if you're not familiar with this, then a couple of videos ago I explained this technique of analyzing the product and the sum. Uh, these give us the product of roots, this gives us the sum. Uh, let's have a, a close look at this. What numbers multiply to give 21? Have a, a, they're four apart. It has to be 7 and 3, and they write the 7 and the 3 here. How do we get a plus 4? Well, the big number has to have the same sign. That gives us up in the positive numbers. And Starting from plus 7, if we go down 3, we'll get to plus 4. Now, in my previous ones, I was writing these numbers below, uh, but it's okay to have them here. What is different about this method is we take this first coefficient, or this first term, and we write not 7x squared, but 7x over each of these. Now... If you looked at my previous video, I'm not sure there's a name for this that method of factorising, but it involved uh, writing 7x, 7x, divide by 7. And we had to go ahead and, we, once we put numbers in here, we had to divide the 7 into one of these sides. This method does the dividing at this stage. Now you can see that 3 won't go into 7, but this does. So I can replace this with x over plus 1. I'll leave the plus 1 there. So that's a simplified version of this. And in fact, these become our factors. It's quite nice. This becomes x plus 1. And this is 7x minus 3. And one of the nice things about this is there's no extra work in here. It's all done on this side. And that, in fact, is this factorised. We get x times 7x is 7x squared, and we get minus 3x, and plus 7x is plus 4x, and 1 times minus 3 is minus 3. It works beautifully. So it's a nice little technique. So in other words, we can set our factors up. Let's work this one out. Quite a large one again. Minus 5 times 14 is minus 70. Minus 33. I might put the minus 33 straight underneath it and do my analysis like this. Uh, what numbers multiply to make 70 that are 33 apart? Well, I explained in my last video, 33 is about half of 70. So the first thing I would check out would be what half of 70 is. And sure enough, 
uh, 35 times 2 makes 70, 35 is half of 70. So 35 times 2 makes 70 and they are in fact 33 apart. So the fact that this was such a huge number turned out to be a benefit rather than a liability. How do we get minus 33 with these two numbers? Well, the big one has to have the same sign and from minus 33, 35 we have to come up to. And all you've got to remember for this method is we take that first coefficient and I really didn't leave a lot of room there. I think I might change colours as well. I suppose green and purple go that well together, do they? I think I might use red. And uh, we would write the 14x above each of these. So whether you want to do it below or up here is, is your choice. Now, 2 will go into 14, so this is equal to 7x over plus 2. And I can now cross that off. And here, uh, 7 will go into both those. So if I divide them both by 7, I'll get 2x over negative 5. So both these have been reduced now. And my two factors will be 2x minus 5 and 7x plus 2. How's that? Do you like it? It's a nice method. So whether you set it out as a diamond or set it out with your product sum above and do your reductions underneath really doesn't matter. The setting out is your choice. But the methodology is important. Let's do this a little bit more quickly. 8 times 5 is plus 40. Minus 13. And I'm after two numbers that multiply to 8, 40 and add up to 13. Now, this happens to be 5 and 8. 5 eighths are 40 and 5 plus 8 is 13. To get minus 13, they'd both be negative. Certainly the big number has to be negative. It always has to have the same sign. And starting at minus 8, we go down another 5 to get there. And all that remains now is for us to choose 8x and write that on top. Now this side we cannot simplify, but this side we certainly can. 8 divides into both of them and gives me x over negative 1. And that means that my factors are 8x minus 5 and x minus 1. A lovely little technique. And uh, I encourage you, whether you set it out in the diamond way, with your product here and your sum here and then your reductions on the side, or like this, is entirely up to you. There's merit both ways. Uh, I suppose this way is properly called a diamond. I, this is using the same methodology but doing it in a different shape. Uh, if you've enjoyed that, then please leave a comment to that effect under the video. And please click, click the like button. If you're not a subscriber, then I encourage you to subscribe so you find out about future videos. And just before I go, there's a gift. As I've mentioned in the previous couple of videos, I've created a workbook, an Excel workbook, with no macros, it's quite clean, and uh, provided a link for it in the description below the video. So you can download it from my website. It produces sheets like this, with a series of quadratic equations, where you can control the level of difficulty, how simple or difficult they are, by changing a number up the top. And every time you press the F9 key, or every time you open up the workbook, Excel calculates a brand new set of uh, quadratics for you, so it's randomised. So you get a different sheet every time you look. The answers are on the side, and you can either fold them under and calculate them yourself and check your answers. Or if you start to get particularly smart, or you want to test your mental prowess, then tuck them away, sit with a friend or your mum or dad or your teacher, or uh, if you're a teacher, or perhaps if you are a teacher, you might pair students in a class to hold them up like this, and one tries to factorise in their head and say out aloud what the factors are, and the other student can check. A bit more difficult with these ones, because there's a lot of work involved, that's only for your very, very top students, but certainly monic 
quadratics with the 1x squared, uh, students should be able to factorise those mentally and it's, they make great little worksheets. So let me encourage you to download it and try it. And if you do like it, please leave a comment to that effect uh, so that other viewers can see that I'm not just wasting their time. I think it's a wonderful resource and I've used it to great effect with my students in classes. So there you go. The Diamond Method in all its glory. And I thank you very much for watching.